Hey guys, Todd from Lowbrow here again. Welcome back. Today we're going to continue on with our Triumph 650 engine rebuild series. Uh, we're going to button up the timing chest area today. I'm going to show you how to put the cam gears back on and set your cam timing and all this other good stuff we got going on here. Uh, generally, first thing I like to do is go ahead and put the uh, exhaust and intake cams back on. There's a special tool required for this. It is actually the same tool we use to remove them. You just use it a little bit differently. And uh, after I get those two gears on, then we'll go ahead and install the pinion gear on the crank. And once we get that on there, we can set our timing. Once the timing's set, we can put our new oil pump on. I do like to use new oil pumps. I know there's a little test in the book where it tells you to put your fingers over the hole and pull on the plungers, blah, 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 blah. Well, after I've done all this other work, I don't really want to use a, a used oil pump. Uh, we stock this very nicely made, made in England by LF Harris, Triumph 650 oil pump. Highly recommended, use these all the time. And we're also going to be using this SRM pressure relief valve. That's going to go in this hole right here. And once we get everything all done in there, we'll go ahead and uh, put our seals in our cover with, along with our gasket. And I got some new screws here and we'll be done with this portion of the program. All right, on the uh, cam gears, we have these little keys. That little key will be inserted in that keyway on the camshaft for both cams. We have two keys and then you have this nut goes on here to drive your oil pump. This nut goes on here. And if you may remember from when we took it apart, see it says LH. No, that doesn't stand for my coworker long hair. That stands for left hand, left hand threads, okay? Uh, I like to uh, put a paint dot on my pinion gear. Notice how the dot on there is the keyway, which we also have this Woodruff key that will be inserted in this on the crankshaft. And that dot is for timing purposes. For the intermediate gear has timing marks on it. I like to put a paint dot on there because you may notice by the time you get this nut on there, wow, you can't see that dot anymore. If this tightens up at a point where one of those is covering it, you can't see it. So I just like to put a little paint dot on there. We also have this washer, this machined washer that will be inserted over the crankshaft before putting this gear on. It has a bevel on it and also a keyway. Bevel is going to face in. So once we insert our key, we can put this on and then put our key on like so. It's imperative that you have that washer on your crank before putting this gear on. If you do not put the washer on, it makes it very difficult to remove this gear with the puller that was shown earlier in the series. So we'll go ahead and get these keys situated in there and this one in there. And then we're going to uh, show you how to use the installer tool. Here's our uh, tool that we also use to remove. When we removed the cam gears, we had this tool set up like this and this threaded onto there and we tightened this down and it popped it off. Well, for putting it back on, we're gonna remove this part of the tool and we're gonna be using this. And before I thread it on, this is gonna thread onto here just like it did before when we pulled it, but we're gonna use this to install it. So that's gonna thread on there. And when you are threading the tool onto the gear, make sure it is engaged as fully as you possibly can all the way down onto those threads on there. And that is the reason why we don't want to use a hammer and a socket to pound this on there. That's totally wrong. Not going to work right uh, for two reasons. Number one, see the cam has some goes in and out until you get that gear on there. That's normal to see that once the gear is installed, it won't move in and out like that because the gear will be keeping the cam out. Uh, so if you were to use a socket and hammer this on this, 
guess what's going to happen? They're going to booger up those threads. And then the next guy that goes to take the motor apart in the in 40 years from now, like it is now, 40 years from before, and he's going to try to thread this on, and guess what? It's not going to thread because someone used a socket and a hammer to install their cam gear. Don't beat your cam gears. Okay, along with that piece of the tool, we have these. Now, you may notice the threads on there are two different sizes as two adapters. And since that's a left-hand nut, this is gonna thread on there, left-handed, like so. This tool is a little bit different than the one we have on the site, where this one has the adapter that threads into that one, so one piece does both cam gears, uh, where our tool has two of this piece, so that it has the different, two different size threads. Just a variation of, of the same tool. So we'll go ahead and do the exhaust cam first. You see that's the larger of the two threads. I'm just gonna need to thread these two together. And the other thing that I like to do is always make sure that your tool is gonna slide through there nicely. And it does. I've actually sanded this one down a little bit to get it to slide in and out of the other gear. We'll show you when we get to that one. So. Step one, put your little tiny key in your groove there. Pull your cam out. Okay, normally these keys just slip right in there. Uh, these are giving me a hard time here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use a punch and tap it down into the keyway there. What I'm doing now is making sure that it's orientated correctly. See that end's going in, but the other side is not. Okay, so I'm just going to use this punch and I'm going to carefully tap that key and it, see how it's, it's sticking up more on this side so I want to roll it down a little bit so that when this is meeting up with the keyway on here, this can go on and doesn't push that key out and go around to the back side, which is no bueno. Okay, so I got my key in there. Now I wanna, I wanna put this on the timing dot. Keyway, this keyway, because there's my timing dot, okay? So we'll kinda take a look there. Yep, that looks good. So now we'll go ahead and we'll uh, install our tool on the end of the cam. And now you'll see why it's important that the cam gear, and see how I'm putting my finger in the hole here to uh, keep the cam from moving in. Okay, so before I slide my gear on, I'm gonna go ahead and use a Sharpie and I'm gonna draw a line on the tool where the middle of the keyway is because I won't be able to see the key once I slide this home. So there's our dot, there's our key, there's our line. I'm gonna get this on here. I'm gonna slide that all the way up to the key. And feels like it's right. Okay, so now that we've got the this portion of the tool attached to the end, end of the cam, keyway in the slot, keyway with the dot lined up. We'll put this piece of the tool on over this and thread it down. Being careful not to turn it. Okay, then we're gonna take our hardened washer and our left-handed thread nut. Now, as we tighten this nut, it's gonna force that gear onto that key. And you may notice how my tool's got all those marks on it, and you'll see why in just a sec. This is why.
that's a tight one. Feels like it's going pretty good. If you're concerned that it doesn't, if it's really, really, really hard, you can actually, when you're going on, you could take this off and look and make sure that everything's lined up, but it feels like it's going okay. Okay, since it was real hard going, I just wanted to double check and make sure everything was all lined up and the key was still in the groove, because like I said, sometimes the key will kind of slip out and go behind the gear. Uh, it was very hard going, so I went ahead and took the nut, the washer, and this piece off, and now, you see, I've still got that much to go before it's tight. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just looking with my flashlight and I can see that everything's lined up. There's the line I made with the marker and the keyway is in the groove. It's just going hard, that's all. So we're gonna keep going. Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, got it all the way on there. We'll take this off. Check to make sure it's fully home. We're done with that one. Go ahead and do the intake. Once again, the key seems to be having a hard time getting in the groove. So you want to make sure that the front of the key is flush with this right here and it, it doesn't hurt if you make the front of the key just slightly down. You don't want it like this in the groove because then as this goes on, if it hits it, it'll push it out. So let's have a look here and make sure we like where it's at. Yeah, that looks pretty good right there. Oh, it looks like it could be down just a little tiny bit more. There she goes, I just saw it move. Okay, and if it's down a little in the front, that helps it go on, and once this keyway starts going on, it, it will center itself. Not center, but it'll orientate itself correctly. Okay, so, once again, key with the dot. There's our dot. Now, since this is smaller than that, we're going to take this piece off and put this one on. Same thing goes for this as the other tool. Make sure you have it threaded as far as you can. Okay, we're going to mark it center of the key. All right, so we've uh, sent this one home. Loosen our nut, remove our tool. Check, check the engagement. Take your time when doing this portion of the job. No hurry. And there we go, look at that, beautiful. And you will see, that's that breather gear in there. 
that little bit of play, that's perfectly normal. It's a beautiful thing. Both gears installed, dots lined up with the keyway. Bada bing. Okay, next, put our pinion gear on, washer on, bevel in. I always like to have this facing straight up and down for when I'm getting ready to time because that's the position this is going to be in when you put the middle gear on, the intermediate gear. Uh, let's see how this key fits. Oh, that one went right in there, no problem. Once again, if it doesn't go right in, check to make sure it's, the sides aren't uh, have a, a, something that's not making it go in. Uh, if it's boogered up real bad, you might want to replace it. It's not a problem if it goes right in. If it looks like it's in good shape and it's not going right in, a little tap with your punch, bottom it out. Okay. Get that one started evenly like so. And we're gonna use this socket to drive it home. Not a problem. There really isn't a tool for putting this on. There we go. Boom, done. Make sure you choose a socket that will fit over that. Because if it hits that, it won't go on. Okay, piece of cake. Now, we'll go ahead and put our nuts on and get them torqued. This nut, you may notice, has a shoulder. Obviously, that's gonna face in. And I think we talked about this on disassembly, but old Ham Fist Harry decided he wanted to punch the damn thing. Put a punch mark on the threads and it coincides with a punch mark on there. Not a good idea. We're just gonna put a little drop of red Loctite on there. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is setting the cam timing. This is a gear that came out of the motor. This is called the intermediate gear. And it's gonna have some marks on it. It's gonna have two long dashes. Those are gonna face down to my dot there. It's gonna have a dot here. That's gonna face the exhaust cam to that dot. And then it's gonna have two dashes. Normally, you're gonna see a long and a short dash. This particular gear happens to have two long dashes. Don't be concerned about that. I have a book open here to the page that also shows this. You can see this in your workshop manual, whether it be a Triumph book or this is a Haynes. And it's gonna show you the, how they all line up. And there's a notation in here about the long dash, short dash. And it says, long dash for T120, TR6, short dash for 6T. Well, this is a T120. We're gonna line it up to long dash. Long dash is on the bottom. So, for this gear that has two long dashes, I'm gonna go to the bottom one here. So we'll go ahead and put it on here. And when you're putting this home here, you're gonna wanna, there's my dash dash to my, that one. Then you're gonna wanna turn this gear until that dot is gonna line up with that dot. And, oh, would you look at that? That one's almost there. We want the long dash, which would traditionally be on the bottom. And that should be it right there. You're just gonna kinda get it all on there like so. Sometimes you gotta, once everything gets lined up just right, it'll slide right in there. I can see this one's not lined up good. And there it goes. Now once you've got it slid home, you can double check your work. There's your two long dashes to that dot, dot to the bottom line on here because that would be the long dash if it had a short and long dot to dot. And that's it. It's timed. Okay, as mentioned previously, I'm gonna put a, bit, a little bit of red Loctite on this. A couple of drops. Don't need to be excessive with your red Loctite. This is standard thread, not left. Normally this should thread on very nicely, but it's a little tight because of the punch mark that was on there. So we'll just use our ratchet to
Bring it on down. And that's pretty good there. And we are going to use, same way when we remove the nuts, we're going to use this to torque that. And is that going to be in the right place or not? Yep, that's going to be good. Now, since I've only been able to find one torque spec for this in any book, and it's an actual uh, Triumph book, and it does say 80 foot-pounds, I think that might be a little excessive. Let's run her up to uh, 50 and see how that's feeling, and then we'll go from there. There's 50. Let's just see, let's go up to 75. There she is. I'm pretty happy with that. And oh look, the flat of our nut is actually showing the dot. That's a miracle. Okay, I don't really think uh, red Loctite is necessary on these because they are left-handed. They can't turn themselves off. And we're going to have to switch our torque wrench to off because once again, left hand thread. And this would be easier if I was using my leverage on this side rather than trying to go up with it. I'm going to go down. There she goes. And this is a different size. Once again, left hand threads. And that was set at 75. So I'm pretty happy with that. There we go. Next thing we can do is go ahead and uh, put our oil pump on. Got these two odd lock washers. And we're gonna use that Whitworth wrench on those nuts. Probably not a bad idea to pull your plungers out and just take a look down in there, make sure it looks good. There's no Nothing from the machining process of making the pump in there. I'm gonna clean that gasket surface off. And we're gonna replace with a new gasket. And you'll see there's a series of holes on here. And it's gonna need to go like this because you've got these two holes and that long slot's gonna go to those two, like so. Okay, verifying that everything is lined up there. This piece is gonna go here. This, uh, maybe just a tad bit of uh, some lubrication on there. All right, so. Just gonna slide it home, line up that, like so. Press it on there. Put your odd little washers back on there. And you'll see the nut has a bevel to it. That's obviously gonna face in to match the bevel on the pump.
probably very difficult to get a socket over this. And the torque spec is very low. So it is okay to tighten these by hand. Uh, nice and even. Don't overdo it. There you go. Gasket dry, a little bit of lube there. Oil pumps on. Okay. Now, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the uh, seals in the cover. Now there's two seals in the cover. One on the top, that seal goes against the end of the cam and seals your, if you have uh, contact breakers or points in there, that keeps the oil from the engine from getting in there and fouling on those. The other seal goes in the bottom right here and that coincides with your crankshaft which is pressurized feed. And here's the picture right here and, the, and this is a, a Triumph book. Timing cover oil seal locations and you'll see that the seal that goes in the bottom is going to face with the closed end out. And the seal on the other side is going to face with the spring side in. So once we get them installed, I'll, I'll let you take a look at that. Uh, make sure everything's nice and clean here. Uh, you also have these two dowels on here. Make sure those are on there. Uh, sometimes they get stuck in the cover. That's fine if they're in the cover, but make sure those two locating dowels are there. Uh, and we'll get our, get our seals here installed. All right, I got this uh, very inexpensive uh, little driver kit here. You want to pick one that will closely match the outside diameter of the seal. But since the snap ring has to go in that groove, the seal goes below that, you want to make sure that it's not going to hit the cover. The diameter is not too big. So this one looks just about right. And we don't want to put this retainer on here because that would foul the seal. See, if you were to thread this on here to hold that piece on there, that piece would screw up the seal. So we're just going to set the seal on there. Whoa, look at her. She's all trying to go the wrong direction already. Come on, hey, come on out of there. Get it started nice and square. And then we'll just send it on home with this. And since this is rounded, it doesn't really want to sit too good. So we'll just do it like this. And she's going just a little bit cockeyed. So we'll take that driver off and use just this part. There she is. Looks pretty good. All right, using our snap ring pliers, once again, on any snap ring, if you have a sharp edge and a rounded edge, you want the sharp edge facing down. There we go. Snap ring installed in the groove. I can see that it's all the way around. Okay, so that one faces up. Now we're gonna go ahead and get this one installed. This one's gonna be installed with the closed side facing up if the cover is in this position. We're gonna start it from this side. We're gonna get our little driver tool in there. Start it as square as you can. And it's shaving a little rubber. It's okay, not to worry. That means it's gonna be forming a good seal against the, uh, so don't be alarmed. If it looks like, uh, I'll have you take a look at this. And then it looks like it's just needs to come down just a skosh right there. You want it to be even. There, that 
let's let's take a look. Want it to be even all the way around. All right. So we've got the other seal installed, and there's the rubber that shaved off the edge of it. Nothing to be alarmed about. Sometimes that happens. It's not a problem. Doesn't mean the seal's not going to work. That means that the seal is probably sealing on this inside of this because it did shave that rubber and there's metal in the seal along with the rubber on that kind of type of seal. So there we go. Seal's installed, ready to put our cover on. Now one other thing I've got here that I'm going to do is I'm also going to replace the patent plate. We do have a separate video for just doing this job, so I'm not going to go over the entire procedure but I'm gonna go ahead and pop it on there before I put my cover on. Check out the other video, Triumph Patent Plate Installation on our YouTube channel. So, we got our oil pump on, all tightened up, and all we got left to do here is put our gasket and cover on. Oh, we might as well just pop this new part on real quick here. Our uh, pressure relief valve. I think maybe a wrench is in order. Okay, got the uh, pressure relief valve installed, tighten her up with my crescent wrench because I couldn't find the correct wrench for that. Uh, one last time, we'll just take a quick look at our timing marks. Everything looks good there. Now, one other thing I would like to do at this stage of the game is I would like to prime the crankshaft with oil. Uh, pretty simple to do. I'm going to grab a couple blocks of wood. We're going to flip the engine so that this is facing up. I'm going to use this oil can here. I'm going to pump some oil in that hole because that goes directly into the crank. If you look at your oil diagram in the book, we'll show you. Let's grab the book. We'll show you that real quick. Now if you look at this diagram in the book, you'll see that me putting oil in this right here is going to send it into there, which in turn so I just like doing that so that then on initial startup, there's at least some oil in there and then the pump starts working. Even though I've used assembly lube on the rods, I still like to prime the, the crank. It's not that difficult, I'll show you. Get her done. One other thing I'm gonna do real quick here. This is a special tool that helps the seal go over this so it doesn't get boogered up and it just threads into the, into the end of the cam like so. And we'll just put a, dab of oil on that tool to help it. And maybe a dab of oil on this. Oh, something's going to come out any second. Watch this. Okay, so I'm just going to take my oil can. I'm going to stick it in that hole. Oh, see that? You missed it, gang. It went bloop. That tells me there's oil in there now. I cranked it. I pumped it in that hole until it blooped and sent it back out. And I just saw a little go back in. It's fine. It's all good. She's primed up. Always use a new gasket. Oh, look at that. Goes right on that way. Get that over those two dowels. Pop your cover on. There we go. Put your screws in. Longer screws in those two holes right there. The rest all get short screws. Just look down the holes, make sure your gas gets in a good spot position. And you did check all your screw holes before we put the cover on, right? We did that a long time ago. Always check all threaded holes before any final assembly is done. And right now I'm just 
putting them all in and running them down until they hit the cover. I'm not tightening anything up. I want to have them all in there. Okay, then we're going to go around and give them the first tighten. Again, steel fasteners, aluminum holes. Don't overdo it. That's why I like my T handle for this job. I can kind of feel it. How much it's tightening. And I'm just going to go back around one last time, just ever so slightly. Make sure they're all nice and even. Uh, a couple of them I'm not even really turning. I'm just making sure that I'm, I'm applying the same amount of pressure to each screw with my T-handle just to verify that I've tightened them all evenly. Bam! Beautiful thing. Do you have a... Uh, a loose nut behind the wheel, I mean right here. And see how, see how helpful that their lowbrow engine stand is doing these jobs. Uh, this nut here, I noticed when I was messing with the covers loose, so we want to tighten that up. Uh, traditionally, this would be where your oil pressure sending unit would be, where you'd have a wire going up to your uh, headlight or a red light. When you turn the key on, it comes on. When you kick the motor and it starts, the light goes off, tells you have pressure. Now, since this is going in a bobber, I'm not gonna have any silly red light on my headlight. So I just put a plug in there. Our early motors had that plug. If you need that part number, you can look in your book. And then the uh, tool that we used to put this, help guide the seal so it doesn't get boogered, has a slot there just to unthread it. Take that out. Timing, timing chest, timing gears, all pumped, all buttoned up. Good to go. Uh, next time we get together, we're going to be putting our cylinder and pistons on and uh, getting our top end going here. And then after that, and once all the top end's on, then we'll transmission will go in, primary will go on, and we'll be ready to go for a ride. Woo!